Would you look at that, folks? You couldn't ask for more perfect Christmas weather than this. Unfortunately, those shots were taken in Vermont. And you live in California. Hello? Wake up and smell the latte. Our forecast for the next five days calls for the usual. Warm, toasty, hot, scorching. So I hate to be the one to break it to you, but there is not a chance of there being a white Christmas this year within 100 miles. Oh, where? I'm sitting. No skiing? Nope. No snow, not a drop, not a flake, except for maybe that. Merry Christmas. I cannot believe even you would do this to me. Yeah, and I can't believe that this jerk would ask me for a raise and he can't even deliver snow. Don't change the subject. Look, I only get two weeks a year. How can you give them away? Mary, I need you. All right, fine, the station needs you. Hey, you know the Channel 3 motto, three for the people? Well, Duckworth wants more people stories, and nobody does people stories Better than Mary Maloney. Yeah, well, I'm a people too, and I need snow at Christmas. I need Vermont. I look forward to it all year. Christmas around here is all hype and no heart. I have all the heart you need. Get a transplant. Mary, the station needs one of those great big Mary Maloney Christmas stories. You know, the mm. kind that touch you right here. I hate making people feel that Christmas has to be perfect. They end up feeling hollow and disappointed like I do now. Mary. You are looking at this the wrong way. That's your talent. See, you can make people think Christmas is wonderful, even though it is hollow and disappointing. Hey, come, come with me. Come with me. There is a station in St. Louis that's following a real family as they prepare for the holidays. The audience is eating it up. That is your ticket. I promise you. We're going to find you a family, and you are going to follow them as they prepare for Christmas. We're going to bring the audience right into the living room. Mac, how long have you been promising that you'd move me into news? And I will, but you have to be a good sport. you, you got to play by Duckworth's rules, which reminds me. He wants you to uh, wear this. You know, my contract is up in February, and there is nothing holding me here except a job in news. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? I mean, Mary, you know, your contract's up every year, and every year you threaten to quit, but you never leave. I mean, something's obviously keeping you here, and I have a pretty good idea. I know what it is. You are absolutely right. I have stayed here far too long. It is time to put my foot down, and I'm putting it down on this story. I, I wish you would uh, pick it up and then put it down, then pick it up again and put it down again, because you're on in 53 seconds. to Santa. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. Dear Santa, can you get me a new life? Best idea I ever had. No doubt. Hello, Mary. 30 Thank seconds. Thank you. Nice legs. Yeah, yeah. Good. 15 seconds. Thank you. Hola. Got your bags packed. There's been a change of plans. Oh. Oh, you must be really Four, disappointed. I'm three, so sorry. Two. Well, it's that time of year again when thousands of letters to Santa on the way to the North Pole. And that means it's time for Lifestyles reporter Mary Maloney to help us write our very own letters to Santa. Mary? That's right. Time is running out, but there's still time for you kids of all ages to write to Santa. Thousands of letters filled with Christmas wishes are already on their way to the North Pole. And we have just a few of them here on loan to us by the Postal Service. So, to write to Santa, all you need is some paper, a pen or a pencil, an envelope, and a lot of hope in your heart. So, Van, Rita, here goes. Dear Santa, what I would like for Christmas. How do you spell Ferrari? 
You haven't been that good, Dan. But there's hope in my heart, Rita. All right, now you just fold it, put it in the envelope, and send it to Santa Claus Care of the North Pole. But I have it on good authority that if you send it to St. Nicholas, Kris Kringle, Father Christmas, or just plain Santa, your letter will reach the jolly old fellow. And Mary, what did you wish for? I asked for our entire audience to have a happy and healthy holiday season. And of course, for all of these wishes to come true. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> hey, hey, great job, great job, everybody. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Hey, Rita was too shiny. Okay, good job, good job, good job. Hey, 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 you people were beautiful, excellent as always. Thank you, thank you. You're all great, especially my Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Isn't that smart, huh? What do you need, Max? Well, I had a genius idea. Why don't we get your story from these letters right here? I'm you sure it's filled with ideas. That, that's official mail. I'm sure Santa's not going to mind. I'm sure he's not going to mind. These are filled with ideas. Here, we'll grab some. Let's see. Dear Santa, please bring me a new truck. The one I got last year broke. Love, Jared. No. Uh -huh. Dear Santa, I've been a good person except when I bid my sister. No. Here, 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 here. I'm sorry. I know we're going to find gold here. Okay. Dear Santa, I might be too old to be writing you, but you are my only hope. My mommy died when I was two. Daddy and I have been alone ever since. He's a very good daddy. But all I really want for Christmas is a mommy. I think daddy would like that too. I don't want us to be alone again this year. I know I'm asking a lot, but I hope you can bring someone to love us both. Love, please, Wallace. Smell that. Do you know what that is? Ratings. Mary, this is it. This is your family. I want you to follow the single father and his daughter as they struggle to get through Christmas. No, Matt, this family has enough problems. I don't want to impose on their privacy. Privacy? Mary, privacy? You're a reporter. Listen, if you want to get into the news... You... There's no way this little girl can get a wish in the next four days. It would be a downer. But, Mary Maloney... No, 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 no. Merry Christmas. Oh. Yeah, she'll be able to figure out the, the good, happy angle. This is it, Mary. I'm assigning you this story. No. no, I can see it. The dad, he's struggling to make ends meet, and the little kid, him and her, they live in some shabby cottage without a woman's touch. Mac, no. I am not doing this. Mary. Mary, if you do this for me, I, I promise you on my own next promotion that I will have Duckworth move you to the news my own job on the line. Mary, it's that important to me. Give me this. I'll call them. No, 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 call. No, no, Mary Maloney doesn't call. Mary Maloney shows up. See, they, they see the pretty smile and they can't say no. Whatever you say, boss. That's a good sport, Mary. Don't make it worse, Mac. Oh, oh, oh. It's all so beautiful. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. There's no snow. Ah, who needs snow? I like sunshine all year long. Not me. I like it when it snows at Christmas. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. Ah, how's my big girl? Good. <laughs> Tony, the house looks beautiful. I just got the colors. They're my favorite. <laughs> well, they're my favorite too, sweetie. Cool, huh? Yeah. Tony, great job. Come on, Felice. I am starved. Okay. Mm, something smells good. Lucy made salad too before she left. It's in the fridge. Terrific. Sweetheart, have you decided what you want to do for Christmas yet? Can't we just spend Christmas at home together? Well, yeah, I suppose we could do that, but it's not very exciting around here with just the two of us. It doesn't always have to be just the two of us, you know. 
I suppose not. I can always call some friends and invite them on over. Don't you think it's time you told me what you want for Christmas? I wish you could make it snow. Sweetheart, why is making it snow so important to you? Dad, it's what makes Christmas special. Some shabby cottage. So, what do you want for Christmas? How about one kiss for my big girl, huh? Mwah. <laughs> Let's pray. I'm hungry. <sighs> Did you order pizza again? No. I'll get it. Wallace. Yes? Hi, Mary Maloney, KBTS News. Merry Christmas. Dad, she's late on TV. That's right. And you must be Felice. Yeah. You've been selected for a special segment we're doing on families at Christmas. I don't think so. We're looking for single parent families, and you were recommended. May I come in? Yes. Uh, look, um, <laughs> Felice. Thank you. Felice. Here. Thank you. May I get you something to drink? Oh, no, thank you. Look, Felice. I'll cut to the chase. I'd like to come back with my crew and be a fly on the wall for the next few days, taping your holiday preparations and just hanging out with you and Felice. No, I don't think so. Daddy, we could be on TV. That's right. You could be an inspiration to other single parent families. Yes, Daddy, please. Felice, sweetheart. I don't think this is a good idea. It's way too intrusive. It won't be. We'll, we'll blend into the wallpaper. Can I speak to you? Please? Sure. Alone? Look, uh, sit down. I've never really been a big fan of the media. And this story sounds like just another one of those tearjerker, manipulative things no, that they do on... No, no, I'll put it in a positive light. It'll be an upbeat Christmas story. Miss Maloney, I've seen your work, and I like it. I, I, I really do, but I'm, I'm just not, not comfortable with this. Do you have any kids, Miss Maloney? No. Well, Felice's mother died when Felice was only two years old, and I promised myself that that little girl would not have a sad Christmas ever again. You see, she means the world to me, and I, 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 I don't want her turned into some little pathetic media darling, you know, the poor little rich girl. And I watch the news. I know what the stories are, and they're, they're all just a bunch of hype and no... Heart. Right. Right. I couldn't agree with you more. If I were you, I would say no. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Now, when, uh, when exactly did we change sides? <laughs> Who said anything about sides? Look, it's been a pleasure not doing business with you. You have a beautiful daughter. Thank you. And I appreciate your understanding. I'm surprised, but I'm, I'm appreciative. You're actually doing me a favor, so thank you. You're welcome. OK. I'll walk you out. Great. Merry Christmas. And to you. Joel! 
<laughs> Samantha. Hi, I hope I'm not too early. No, no, you're, you're right on time. You remember Felice? Well, hello, Felice. Why don't you say hello, Felice? Hello. Come on in. Uh, she's sitting right here. Samantha. See, uh, wasn't that the television reporter leaving, Mary Maloney? Yeah, yes, it was. Wow, what was she doing here? Well, she wanted us to be on TV, but it was a, it was a bad idea. I didn't think so. So, what are you two doing for Christmas? Samantha, I am so glad that you asked. How would you like to join Felice and I for Christmas? I would love to. But I always have Christmas with my family in Oakdale. Mommy and Daddy would love to meet you both. Great. Okay, wait. We're having dinner here. We always open our presents on Christmas Eve. You can spend the night. But Santa brings our presents on Christmas morning, right, Daddy? Well, yes, he does, sweetheart, but I'm, I'm sure that Santa brings presents to some houses on Christmas Eve. But Santa would not bring my presents there. Well, at least we could leave a note. I'm opening my presents on Christmas morning. Samantha, it was a very, very nice invitation. Thank you. So, what do you want for Christmas, Felice? Felice is having a little trouble determining exactly what it is that she wants for Christmas. Isn't that right, honey? <laughs> Felice, what's the matter, sweetheart? I don't want to go to Oakdale. I want to be on TV with Mary Maloney, and all I want for Christmas is to be on TV, Dad. That didn't go well. I'm sorry. No, you have to do this story. Mac, it's out of my hands. The guy doesn't want to do it, and frankly, I don't blame him. For your information, I already told Duckworth about the story. I told him about the little girl and a letter to Santa, and she wants some mommy, and I also told him how wonderful you are and how we're going to lose you unless he moves you to the news. And? And he said if you can deliver the ratings on this story, he will move you into the news at the beginning of next year, which is like in a week. So I'll get another story. Duckworth does not want another story. Duckworth wants this story, and so do I. Do you remember Nancy Dunn? Exactly. She used to work here, then she crossed Duckworth. Am I poor? Yeah, I got it. Again, I'm sorry about Felice. I'll talk to her about Christmas as soon as she calms down. Does she know we've been seeing each other? Oh, yeah. yeah it's just the TV thing's got her upset, that's all. <sighs> well. Good night, Joel. Good night. Thanks for understanding. Bye. Me again. You forget something? Not exactly. Look. Before you say anything, just hear me out. Mary. On the way to the station, I was thinking we can work this out. Okay. Forget about the backstory. Uh, it's just a family getting ready for Christmas. Totally a... You said okay. Yes. You mean you'll do it? Okay, I'll do it. I, uh, we'll, we'll do it. Great. We switch sides again. What made you change your mind? I'll tell you what changed my mind if you tell me what changed yours. Um, I'll get fired if I don't do the story. You? Felice really wants to do it, and I just can't seem to tell her no. Huh. Well, so much for the strength of our conviction. Yes. <laughs> Score one more point for hype. No hype. I promise. Okay. Uh, 10 a.m., my crew and I will be here. Okay. Oh, uh, no. I'm not going to be here. I have a meeting in the morning, but... 
Felice has a terrific nanny. Okay. Okay. We're in business. This is a uh, 56 DeSoto, right? You got it. How'd you guess? Always been a fan of cars. Yeah, me too. Okay. Okay. Nice lights. My favorite colors. Mine too. How did you get him to do it? I didn't. He changed his mind. Oh, and that shabby little cottage? It's a mansion. Really? Mm -hmm. Are they attractive? Very. Sympathetic? Extremely. Mac, they're absolutely perfect. I'll tell Duckworth. Great. Be sure to take all the credit. Oh, come on. Can't you, can't you do this one thing? Look, I need to drop her off on my way to work. One day that... Yeah, oh. All right, fine. Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Great sister you turned out to be. Is everything okay, Daddy? Oh, yeah, sweetheart, it's... It, um, no, I've... I forgot that Tony and Rosa have the week off for Christmas, and I don't have anybody here to sit at the house with you today. I could go to work with you. No, Felicia can't go to work with me. I got a big deal that if I don't get it by the end of the year... It... Hey. You know what? I have a big surprise for you. What? That's what I told her. Told who? You remember that really nice lady reporter that was here the other day? Mary Maloney? Yeah. I changed my mind. She's coming here at 10 o'clock to shoot a story. Yes! Thank you, Daddy! Thank you! Thank you! Yeah, you're very welcome. But the problem is, I told her that you had a terrific nanny and you don't have any nanny at all. The phone book? You're looking for my nanny in the phone book? Yeah, well, I need to be at work and you need to be here. What choice do I have? Hello? Yes, my name is Joel Wallace. I need a nanny. Today. Half an hour. Listen, I have a nine-year-old daughter, and she is um, extremely well-behaved, and I need some help. What, with, with references? In a half an hour. Well, yeah. Okay. Fine, it's Wallace, 32 Weatherly Road. Well, Merry Christmas to you. I think it's going to work out. Thank you. Cheers. If I had three wishes, they'd all be the same. I wish Christmas were over. I wish Christmas were over. I wish Christmas were over. My three would be a Heritage Valley collectible known, number 54, the tennis player, a couple CDs, trip to Bermuda for me to recover from Christmas shopping. Oh, free yourself, pal. This year, I'm not shopping at all. Scrooge? I didn't say I wasn't celebrating. I'm just not buying anything. I'm making my own cards and gifts and paper, baking cookies, the whole nine yards. That sounds like a lot of work. Not really. The secret is this. Eleanor Ellis Christmas organizer. She does everything herself, so can I. Yeah, with a staff of 30. Thank you. Oh, uh, say, how did you get that book? Bought it. Bought it? In a store. Hmm. I bet it's snowing in Vermont today. Police? Is your room neat? Kind of. Kind of. Daddy, how long does it take for a letter to get to the North Pole? I don't think it takes that long, sweetheart. It's time. I like her already. Yes? Good morning. Good morning. I'm here from the agency. You're the, you're the nanny? I prefer to be called governor. It's uh, the masculine form of uh, governess. Um, sir, I, I, you... How do you do? Hi. Do you want to be on TV? Oh, madam. I live to be on TV. Mary Maloney will be here in half an hour. You don't say. Well, we better put this place in shape, huh? I like him. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. How you've got to get a shot of that. And the, and the swings. Oh, this is just terrific. This is going to be perfect. 
Oh, I get it. We're doing the poor little rich girl story. Don't ever say that. You either. Nobody say that. Come on, Hal. Let's get set up over there. We're going to take some shots. We're going to do some of this. Stop. Oh, hello, Mary. Welcome. Hi. I'm Les Turner. Hello, Les. Uh, are you Felice's... Mary, Mary! Hi. This is Les. He, he's my governor. It's kind of like a nanny. Oh. Oh, very nice to meet you. Not kind of like a nanny. It's kind of like the governor. Thank you. So, Les, I just need a little background information. How did you become a nanny or governor? Have a cookie, cookie? Thanks. Mm. Mary, I started out as a song and dance man in the dying days of vaudeville. Oh. When I got on the stage, people clapped their hands right over their eyes. Kaboom, ching. Well, anywho, did a few musicals, worked in a film now and then, and worked on TV off and on. I never saw you on TV. Yeah, that's because most people like me off more than on. Well, you'll be back on TV now. But why a governor? Well, I had to earn a living. And I always liked kids, and I knew my way around a boarding house kitchen. It's really a very good job. And how long have you been Felice's governor? Oh, we go way, way back. Right, Felice? Right. Way, way back. Anything else? Uh... Well, Les, I'll have to get some more information from you later, but why don't I go get my crew, and then maybe you could give me a tour of the house. Okay. Now, there's the guest room. Here's Dad's room. Here's Tony's room. And then Les's room. Huh. Let's take a look. Nice. Going somewhere, Les? But I'm always ready in case I get my big break. Oops! Looks like we got our work cut out for us. What a great dollhouse. Yeah. Who's that up there? Oh, that's Santa. But it doesn't make sense to have Santa without snow. Snow? You want snow? Snow is no problem. Snow is easy. There's no business like snow business like no business I know. <laughs> Better? Yes. Yeah. We'll be ready in five minutes, Mary. Great. I'll just be a sec. Shall I comb your hair, too? Sure. You have nice hair. It's so thick. Thank you. What do you think? You look good. What do you think? I think you're right. We look good. Together. Camera ready. Let's go. Getting ready for Christmas is overwhelming for some families. But Felice Wallace, her businessman father, Joel, and their unique governor, that's a male nanny, Les Turner, make holiday preparations something special. Even a messy room means fun in this unusual household. Because when you're getting ready for the holidays, first, you better clean up your act. From baking gingerbread men... Deck the hall with boughs of holly... To decking the halls with strings of popcorn... To setting up the family nativity scene, this pair adds a touch of magic to the most mundane task. Now, as we follow the Wallace family up until Christmas, maybe we'll all learn how to make our own holiday a little merrier. For KBTS News, this is Mary Maloney, home for the holidays. Cut. Okay, how was it? That was great. How was that for you? Look good through the lens. Great, great. Thanks, guys.
places, everybody. He's here. home, sweetheart. Where are you? Ladies and gentlemen, presenting those talented titans of Terpsichore, Turner and Wallace, doing their favorite number. The Santa Soft Shoe. <laughs> Say, that was pretty good. You know, dancers run in my family. Well, they should. Kaboom. Chick. <laughs> I heard a new joke the other day. I wonder if I told you. Was it funny? Yes. Then you didn't. Kaboom. <laughs> what a remark. I'm speechless. If only you could stay that way. Kaboom. Chick. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh. That was fantastic, sweetheart. Just fantastic. I think that the team of Wallace and Turner should be on the road for a very long time. Uh, uh, no, it's Turner and Wallace. I still get top billing, you know. I, I'm, I stand corrected, Les. I'm sorry. Mm. Nice reactions. Okay, that's a wrap. We can put voiceover in in the morning. Great. I'll meet you in the van. I just need a moment with Joel. Oh, uh, Les, would you mind? Oh, sure. Come on, sweetheart. Very cute. <laughs> so, how'd it go today? Is Great. Yeah. yeah, that Les is a jam. <laughs> yes, he is. But uh, you should know, Felice was disappointed you weren't here. Yeah, I'm in. What's no, up? thank you. I'm in the middle of a big business deal. I couldn't get away. But she understands. She's used to it. Joel, I wasn't going to tell you this, but maybe I should mention how you were really chosen for this segment. Sure. We got a bunch of letters to Santa down at the station. Okay. And one was from Felice. Do you want to know what she asked for? Of course. She said all she wants for Christmas is a mommy. That you two were lonely. She, she said that? Well, why wouldn't she tell me about it? I, I thought when she didn't want us to be lonely that she just wanted company. Mary, when Felice's mother, Jeannie, when Jeannie died, I promised that I would take the best possible care of our daughter. So I became a bond broker. I worked hard to make money, not because I love money, but because I love Felice. Felice means happy. Did you know that? That's how we always wanted her to stay. Oh, I don't know why I'm saying all this. I don't normally talk this way. I, I'm sorry. I... It's not that I never considered remarrying. It's just that I never thought anybody could come close to Jeannie. I thought, I guess, I thought that Felice wouldn't miss what she'd never had in the first place. That's not true. Wait a minute. You're not going to use any of this in your story, are you? Of course not. Said any of this, you're a reporter. I forgot. I'm not being a reporter right now. You should not have opened up my daughter's letter to Santa. This is exactly the kind of invasion of privacy that I was worried about. My boss opened the letter, and I'm not going to read it on the air. I should hope not. And I hope that you realize, Miss Maloney, that life isn't just a series of happy little sound bites. <sighs> Since when did we switch sides again? You're right, Ma Mary. I'm sorry. I, I just, uh, Guess the letter thing kind of threw me. I'm sorry for mentioning it. I probably needed to hear it. I just, uh, just brought up a lot of feelings. It's... So should we come back tomorrow? Yes. Yes, you should come back tomorrow. I don't want to disappoint Felice. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. And in fact, I have a late dinner engagement. Let me walk you to your car. I know the way.
we have a dinner date? No. Ah, oh, come on. I thought we could celebrate your coup. Coup? Hey, your coup, your coup, the motherless kid. It's it's brilliant. It's great reporting. What's all this stuff? What did you rob a toy store? No, I thought it would be nice to bring some gifts down to the family shelter. Oh. I did a story on them last year, you remember? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. I remember everything. I just, you know, I thought you hated Christmas. I'm not Scrooge. I think every kid deserves something from Santa. You know what I think, Mary? I hate Christmas whenever it's convenient, Maloney. I think you're a complete fraud. You have this Christmas tree. Well, since you canceled my vacation... Ah! Oh, <laughs> I knew you were going to take that shot. I mean, anyway, look at this tree. Look at this tree. It's, it's missing something. It, it should have a star or something on top, shouldn't it? I like it like this. Hey, where's your corkscrew? You never give up, do you? Why would I give up on something I really want? Because you can't have everything you want, Mac. Even at Christmas. Like the little girl who wants a mom. It's sad. The story really is getting to you. I, I didn't even know you liked kids. Well, now you know. And now you go. Interesting. So, where are we going here, Pookie? Gallagher's down at the end. Let's go. Morning, pal. How's it going? Uh, worst day ever. Would you believe it? I haven't had a donation all day. People just don't care anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Thanks so much. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. spirit around here, don't they? I did a minute ago. Les started it. Nah. So, what do you say? Let's go shopping. Have you decided what you're getting your dad yet? Yes. <laughs> okay. The tape is rolling, sweetie, so do your stuff. Daddy's like this one a lot. I like it. Does it come in aquamarine? That's his favorite color. Oh, no, honey, I'm sorry. Just the ones you see here. Yeah. How about a hunter green? Daddy would like that, I bet. Look through the pile, please. You must have aquamarine. I said there wasn't that color. How about a nice yellow? She doesn't want yellow, Millicent Fay. She wants aquamarine. And I have a feeling 
that in that pile there's at least one large size aquamarine sweater. Trust me on that. Here it is. Size large. Can't believe it. Neither can I. Next time, look more closely, maybe. Okay. Well, we got what we wanted, so let's move over to Santa's village, okay? Hey, did you see that? It was almost like magic. Yeah. I think the next time I go shopping, I'm bringing less with me. Up. Santa will be back in an hour. Ho, ho, ho. Where did they get these guys? That's not the real Santa. Of course not. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, hey, where are you going? At? Hey, Bob, Bob. Hey, hey, Santa. You stay here. up and join this. Thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, how are you getting all that? Merry Christmas, Mary Maloney. If you're dreading that last minute trip to the mall, take heart. Shoppers today at Ridgecrest Mall were in for quite a treat from two of our home for the holiday subjects. Police Wallace and Les Turner. Wait till you see, Dad. Wait till you see. People were in a giving mood at Ridgecrest Mall today. But no one was happier than Felice Wallace as she picked out a present for her father. Oh, Dad, don't look, don't look. <laughs> okay, I'm not... I'm don't not, look, Dad. I can't see a thing, sweetheart, I promise. It's just what Daddy wanted. And when Felice had finished her shopping, she and her governor, Les Turner, stepped in to make the Christmas season even merrier. As you can see, Felice and Les have a gift for spreading happiness. Keep watching tomorrow night for another chapter in this very special story we call Home for the Holidays. For KBTS, this is Mary Maloney. What do you think? I love it. I'm on TV. I have to admit, I loved it too. It was fantastic. Great. Another satisfied customer. Which means, Santa's little helper, it is time for you to go to bed. Can Mary tuck me in tonight? Uh... Just so she's snug as a bug in a rug. I can do that. Okay, fine. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night, sweetheart. Okay. Yeah. Pretty nice having a woman around, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. You know, I'm surprised that a smart woman hasn't caught a good-looking guy like you all these years. I remember a fellow I knew just like you. He said he was looking for an old-fashioned girl. I said, why don't you come to my house? I'll introduce you to my grandmother. Kaboom, chick. What? You remind me of my last audience. And I do mean last. You know, I was merely saying that I'm surprised that you never married again. Uh, of course, it's none of my business, but you, uh, you must know some nice ladies. Les has, 
Has Felice said anything to you about that? Well, she has said that there's one special lady that's been around here lately that she likes. She said that? Hmm. Just this morning, as a matter of fact. Good night. Good night. There. Snug as a bug in a rug. You believe in Santa Claus, don't you? Sure I do. But I don't believe that Santa can make every wish come true all of the time. He's got a big job. There are a lot of kids out there. I know. But... I love these. Oh. oh, look at the family. Looks like Vermont. What's in Vermont? A lot of happy memories. When I was a kid, we always used to go to Vermont to see my grandparents. And it always snowed at Christmas. Like magic. Are you happy? See, when I was growing up, my family had a lot of problems. So, Christmas in Vermont was my favorite time of the year. And now, even though Grandma and Grandpa are gone, I still go back there to remember the happy times. I love snow, too. I guess it won't be snowing this year. Have a very merry Christmas, just the same. Is everything all right? Yeah, fine. Um, she had a really busy day. She ought to sleep well tonight. Sorry, I missed it. Here, you, you left this downstairs. Thank you. Some of the things I said. Look, um, there are only two more days left, and then we'll be done with this story that neither one of us wanted to do. Excuse me, um, I have an appointment with Les. Come in. How do you do? Have a seat in my chair. Thank you. I, uh, I didn't have any clips that you wanted, but I did have some photos. Great. Oh, these are terrific. Look at you. Who ever think I'd end up as a governor? Pays the rent, right? Which is more than my hoofing was doing. I had to quit the stage because of my throat. Your throat? Yeah, the audience threatened to cut it. <laughs> anyway, I like kids. You like kids? Sure. You ever think of having kids? Well, I'm not really... Seems that you have a knack with kids. Kids like you. Felice sure does. It's probably because I'm on TV. Oh, I think she'd like it no matter what you did. It's a shame, though, that she hasn't got a mother. It's a bad break, don't you think? It's a very bad break. Mm -hmm. Pretty talented lady like... Uh, you probably never had any bad breaks like that.
Oh, I had my share. So, is your story almost finished? Is it going well, do you think? So far, so good. I don't have my ending yet, though. Oh, you have to end it with a big finish. You gotta give it everything you got. Yeah, don't hold anything back. That's what they used to tell me. Everything I got. Liz, I couldn't do that. Yes, you can, Mary. So, folks, looks like our prediction for a scorcher of a Christmas still holds. So make sure you wear your sunscreen if you plan to go out caroling, because there is not a chance of there being a white Christmas within a hundred miles of where I'm sitting. No snowboarding? Nope. No snow. Not a drop. Oh, what does he know? That guy's so dumb, he tried to find the zip code for the Gettysburg Address. Kaboom check. <laughs> I had a weird dream last night. What was it? I dreamed that you were Santa Claus. No. Me? <laughs> what a crazy dream. Well, yesterday it was kind of like you were Santa Claus. You started all those people giving money. I found Daddy's sweater, and you seem to know what every one of those kids wanted for Christmas. Oh, well, I didn't make those things happen. It just happened. Yeah, but you made it feel like Christmas wherever you went, just like Santa Claus. Whoa, now. I may have put on a few pounds, but I don't have a beard. I don't wear a red suit. Now, I like Christmas a lot, but I am not Santa. Yeah, but in my dream, you had a beard and a red suit, and you looked exactly like Santa Claus. If I was Santa for Christmas, I'd give myself a one-man show on Broadway. Yeah, but there was something else. The way you got here so fast. It was like you were waiting outside for Daddy's call. I needed the job. Hello? Oh, he's not here. Can I take a message? Yeah, just a second. jump into conclusions. You must be. There's no other way you could have got this letter. Oh, no, no, no. You, you, you know what happened? The, the day I got here, I found this letter on top of the mailbox. I guess the, the postmaster must have uh, returned it. Yeah. So I was going to give it to you, and I, I put it in my pocket. Well, listen, it's still not too late to mail it, huh? Oh, oh here's the problem. You forgot to put down the zip code for the North Pole. So. We'll just look that up, and then we'll mail it. Our mailman doesn't come that early. You are Santa Claus. Police, it doesn't make sense. If I was Santa Claus, I'd be too busy making toys and, and checking lists to be here now, right? Are you going to bring me a mommy like I asked in the letter? A mommy isn't something you order like a hamburger. Now, you had a mom who loved you very much, and you still have a dad who wants the very best for you. You live in a nice house, you go to a nice school, and you got me. Now, that's better than a lot of kids get. I know, but it isn't just for me. It's for Daddy, too. So if 
you're not seeing it, I'm just gonna have to get it, Mommy, on my own. As you can see, no, 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 Jason no. Lance just keep a gift for spreading happiness. Keep watching tomorrow night for another chapter in this very special story we call Home for the Holidays. It's sweet, isn't it? Katrina did a great edit. It's too soft. Too soft? Mag, I thought you wanted something that touches the heart. This touches the heart. But what's the ending? Mary Duckworth is getting nervous. I have to tell you, you don't have a lot of time to redeem yourself before your contract is up. Thanks for reminding me. I'll just go someplace else. Well, it is easier to find a job when you have a job. Besides, time marches on. Maybe five years ago, you could pull a stunt like this. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Mary, we are in the business of selling dreams. Where is this dream going to end? Well, they have a very merry Christmas, I hope. No, 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 no. They are going to have the merriest Christmas that anyone has ever had in the history of Christmases. They are going to have every single one of their dreams and wishes fulfilled. Who are you, Santa Claus? No, you are. You're going to get in there and you are going to do something. Okay. What does that little girl want for Christmas? A mother. Good. Get her one. Mac, are you crazy? We have been promoting this show like there's no tomorrow. Now Duckworth wants a happy ending. I can't. Yep. He is going to accept nothing less. Get that kid a mommy. Right. Based on news, I won't have to make up the ending. You want to bet? Joel's daughter. Daddy's really down in the dumps, and I think he misses you. Can you come by around five on Christmas Eve? I think he'd really like to see you again. Hello, Maria. This is Felice Wallace, Joel's daughter. Daddy's really down in the dumps, and I think he misses you. Could you drop by around five on Christmas Eve? I think he'd really like to see you again. Thank you. This is Felice Wallace, Joel's daughter. Daddy's really down in the dumps. I think he misses you. Can you come by around five on Christmas Eve? I think he'd really like to see you again. Thank you. Mary. Yeah, hi, it's Joel Wallace. Hi, Joel. What's up? Um, got kind of a surprise for you. Think you get your crew together and stop by my house around eight o'clock tonight? What is it? I can't tell you, but I promise that it will be great for your story and you will love it. Okay. We'll be there. All right, I'll see you then. Mary Maloney, I would like you to meet Samantha Bruce. Nice to meet you. Um, I'd like to do a shot that Samantha and Felice and I are all in together. Can we do that? Sure. Thanks. Got that, guys? Sure. Everybody's a director. Okay, rolling tape. Cameras on you, Joel. And three, two, one. Um, Felice, I know that you have wanted a mommy for a very, very long time. In fact, it's one of your biggest wishes. Well, you don't have to wish for it anymore, because Samantha and I are getting married just as soon as possible. <laughs> I'll be your new mommy. <laughs> Go on, hug your, hug your new mommy, sweetheart. <laughs> Uh, kill the camera. Pack it up. Wait just a second. This is a personal family moment. It, we don't belong here. It's intrusive. I thought you said that you wanted an uplifting story. Who cares what I want? Do you care what your daughter wants? Look at her. Look, I'm sorry. That was out of line. I should go. Please, honey, I gotta go. Please, Mary, tuck me in tonight. 
Sweetheart, I think that uh, Samantha should be the one to tuck you in tonight. Wouldn't you like to do that, Sam? Go on. Go on, sweetie. I'll be back tomorrow night for the tree trimming. news, huh? You got your happy ending. You think so? Well, at least got her mom. What could be better? I'm just a reporter. How do you feel about it? Me? I'm just the governor. Good night, Mary. Good night. There you go. Ooh. Isn't this cute? It looks like an antique. It's probably worth a lot of money. I was hoping it would snow for Christmas. Mmm, snow. You know what? It just messes up the road and makes it difficult to get around. So tomorrow night you'll get to meet your new grandma and grandpa. Well, good night. Right there. Let's just get set up for the tree trimming, put the tea and cookies, and then get out of here as soon as possible, okay? Okay, by me. Too nervous about being on television. Yes, sweetheart, you don't have to be nervous. There's really nothing. There's nothing to. I would like a cookie, thank you, Wes. There's nothing to it, right? Right, Felice? Look, once we've um, finished trimming the tree, we're all going to get in the car. We're going to go over to Samantha's mm -hmm. parents, and we're going to have dinner. What are we having? Prime rib. Prime rib. We always have prime rib. Ooh, that sounds mm -hmm. yummy, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. I don't eat red meat. Exactly what do you call a hamburger? I'll get that. Thank you, Les. Hi, I'm Maria Archer. I think Joel and Felice are expecting me. Yes, come on in. Merry Christmas. Oh, the gifts go in the formal dining room on the right. Is the Wallace family expecting you? You bet, honey. I'm Charlene. Oh, Charlene. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, you all. Come on in. Formal dining room on the right. that we all have to do because our lives are... Uh, would you excuse me for a moment? Merry Christmas. 
Christmas, Joel, honey. How's that adorable little daughter of yours? She's, she's just fine. Charlene, thank you. Mary Maloney, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I'm, I'm delighted that you're here. Uh, I want to introduce you to Samantha Bruce, my fiance. Oh. Oh. What kind of a joke is this? It's not a joke, Maria. Oh. Well, bah, and humbug, darling. Charlene? Nice going. See you, Leslie. Oh, I Joel, you. I would very much like to know what the... What was that all about? Uh, Excuse me. I'm sure that you two have things you'd like to discuss, but I've got a crew that has other plans for the night. Can we get to the tree trimming soon? Yeah, we're going to get to it in just a minute, but first there's someone I really need to talk to. Tell me exactly what you did. I called all the women you dated. It was before you were engaged, Dad. I was trying to help you. First of all, sweetheart, I did not date all of those women. And secondly, how could this possibly help me? Oh, well, I'd get a mom and you'd get a wife. Sweetheart, don't you think that I should be able to pick out my own wife? You never have in all these years. I was, I was just trying to help you. That's why I wanted us on TV. So maybe some nice lady would see us. Then, then I thought of calling all your girlfriends. Felice. You called every woman's name in my workbook. Felice Leslie is, is my dentist. Come on, sweetie. I didn't think that they'd all come, Dad. Don't you think that maybe you should have asked me how I felt about it first? Don't you think that maybe you should have asked me how I felt about Samantha first? Maybe, maybe I should have, but that... Felice, I heard that you wanted a mommy for Christmas. I, I thought I was doing the right thing. Les told you? No. Les didn't tell me. I just, I just found out. Look, I have held on to your mommy for a very, very long time. And it was really selfish of me because you need a real live mommy not just a memory so i asked samantha to marry me because i i think she'll make a terrific mommy and i thought you'd be happy do you love her because if you don't then she wouldn't make a good mommy <laughs> we have a tv crew waiting for us downstairs Over the last few days, we've gotten to know Joel Wallace, his daughter, Felice, and their very special governor, Les Turner. Today, we're going to meet a soon-to-be member of the family, Samantha Bruce, whose engagement to Joel has just been announced. All right, uh, cut. That's it for the stand-up. Now, all we have left are the beauty shots of the tree trimming, and then we get to go home. Let's go. You too, Les. Uh, maybe this should... Just be for the family, huh? Okay. We'll start with the family.
I think they need your help to trim the tree. Okay. You know, I'm kind of glad you're not Santa Claus after all. You are? Well, I'd hate to think Santa would mess things up so badly. And now, for the piece de resistance, this star was given to Felice by her mother just before she left us. This year, I think that it's only right if Samantha should put the star on top of the Wallace family Christmas tree. take off and, and I'll meet you in the van. I just, uh, I need to speak with Joel alone, please. Joel. It's all right, sweetheart. I'll just be a few minutes. Hey, I, I think you really ought to take it easy. No, I, I'm, I can call I'm somebody. fine, really. But I need to ask you a really blunt question. Why didn't you tell me Felice was adopted? Why would you ask something like that? Because your wife didn't give her that star. Of course she did. Her birth mother gave it to her. And when you adopted her, the star came with her. Boy, you reporters really do your homework, don't you? Who told you that? No one had to tell me. What are you saying? Nine years ago, I had to make the most difficult decision of my life. I made a string of really bad choices, but I was trying to do the right thing. That star, my grandfather made that star, and he gave it to my mother, and gave it to me. And I gave it to my baby girl the day that I said goodbye to her. I couldn't take care of her. How did you find my daughter? I wasn't looking. I, I swear, um, it was purely by chance that my boss picked her letter out of the pile. Oh, come on. He opened her letter and he assigned me the story. You expect me to believe that out of the thousands of letters to Santa that you found Felice's letter? Come on. I, I, it's crazy, I know. But there's no way I could have known that it was her. I mean, if she had told me she was adopted, maybe I could have... She doesn't know. She doesn't know. And I know that that's wrong, but I never seem to be able to find the right moment to tell her. She was way too young anyway when her mother died to really understand anything. And I wanted to tell her all about you. But I thought that would be like losing two mommies instead of just one. That would be way too much for the little girl to, to handle. Or maybe it was just too much for me to handle, but now that she's older, I can't seem to tell her much of anything about that time at all. But you gotta understand, keeping the secret so long has been so very difficult, and I don't want anyone... All I wanted to know was that I hadn't made a mistake. And that my baby girl was loved and wanted. Let me tell you something. I love my daughter more than anything in the world. Joel, we need to get to get going. Joel, we need to leave now. Mommy and Daddy are expecting us. 
Now you got rid of those other women, get rid of her. I'm very sorry, Samantha. But something important has come up. More important than me? I see. Well, Merry Christmas to you both. Story. Yeah, you know, Mary. She'll use her magic touch and get a happy ending. Oh, no. What's wrong? I just remembered I don't have my car. Joel picked me up. Oh, can I give you a ride somewhere? You, yeah, that would be great. In fact, if you don't have dinner plans, you're welcome to join me and my family. It's 45 miles, but they're serving prime rib. Dinner with Mom and Dad is so my style. I'm Hal. I know. Samantha. I know. Wes, where are you? Wes? Where are you going? Sorry, Cookie. I have to leave. I have a deadline to meet. But you can't go. We'll take care of me. Don't you worry. You won't need me anymore. You can trust me on that. But you can't leave me here with Samantha. And you don't have to worry about Samantha anymore, either. You can trust me on that, too. Trust you? I can't trust you at all. You're running out on me. You know, Santa, you're just an old song and dance man. You're a big flop. Like I said all along. I want you to give this to your dad. It's something he's always wanted. Don't you have a present for me? It's on its way. I'm sorry, Felice. It's time for me to shuffle off to Buffalo. Merry Christmas. I love you, Cookie. Wes! Wes, come back! What happened, honey? He's gone. Who? Les is gone. He didn't just disappear. Dick, Listen. Jason said goodbye. Make him come back, I... honey, please. Sweetheart, I can't make him come back if he doesn't want to be here. Here. There's something. I should go. I. I want you to stay. Police. You know that I love you more than any daddy's ever loved his daughter, right? Sweetheart, there's something I should have told you a very long time ago. Your mommy and I adopted you when you were a very little baby girl. When your mother loved you so much. But you had another mommy who loved you very much, too. In fact, she loved you so much that when she realized she couldn't take care of you, she found another mommy and daddy who could. I want you to meet her. Santa Claus. I wrote a letter to Santa asking for a mom, and now it's come true. You know what, Felice? 
I wrote a letter to Santa about you. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh! is to know that my little girl is happy. I'm happy now, Mommy. Me too, sweetie. You got this for you, Daddy. This is a Mickey Mantle baseball glove. I had one when I was 10 years old, but I lost it. It was my most prized possession. How, how did he know? Streep, Glenn Close, Jeremy Irons og Winona Ryder har hovedrollerne i Bill Augusts version af Isabel Allende's klassiker Åndernes Hus. Se med lige om lidt.